this is going to be um, an example of building something more complex than just working on a website. In this tutorial I'm going to create some objects and we're going to see how they work. So I'm going to clean out the screen. I'm going to create a new file uh, object. It doesn't really matter what it's called as long as we're starting from scratch. And actually it does matter. We need to rename it to object.js from HTML. Now we have a clean JS file. Uh, you probably shouldn't worry about all the other files I have opened in my tabs in IntelliJ. This is completely separate. So what I wanted to talk about is that let's say we're creating an app and this has nothing to do with um, the way it will be visualized in HTML at this point. But the point of this tutorial is that we're going to make some objects in JavaScript. Uh, for example, let's say you started a new uh, video game and obviously you need a, an, at least one object to define the game itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own constructor and call it game. As you know in JavaScript all constructors are functions so we're going to create a function and this is what it's going to look like and don't forget the semicolon at the end when you create an object in this way in JavaScript you need that otherwise it's going to generate an error so this is the main game object what do games need they need some kind of a state is the game playing is it running or uh, which is the same thing playing running uh, pausing or whatever whatever you want your game to do let's say uh, we need some kind of a state so we created this object from scratch this is a constructor we're going to create an object from this this is not a instance of that object yet so this is more like a blueprint so let's add something in order to add a property to an object in JavaScript we need to attach it to the this keyword the this keyword is a reserved keyword in JavaScript so we cannot uh, for example we cannot do something like this we cannot name our variables with the name this because it's reserved but we can use that um, this this <laughs> this um, keyword inside this blueprint object and let's say we are going to create a property called state and give it a value of zero or nothing really zero uh, and this way we just added a state to our game object now in the future when it actually comes to creating anything from this game, game object we need to first initialize it in order to do that we can do something like let's say variable my game and you use the new operator and you use the name you gave your constructor so this is say constructor function it's a constructor and here we initialize initialize the object uh, by using the new operator and the constructor's name. By the way, this is how uh, the jQuery uh, was also created. They created a function constructor. They named it jQuery and also the dollar sign. And it's nothing more than the same thing we're seeing here. It just named jQuery. Here we're making our own custom object in exactly the same way. So, and in the same way as jQuery has methods, we can add methods to our object as well. So at this point, our game is initialized. This is the default state value, which is zero. We don't know what it is yet. 
but once you call this line it's going to be set to that so my game if we would have um, printed this out on console state of the object my game we would get a zero is what's defined in the function uh, in the objects constructor as a default it's the default value so we created the game object and now we can do things like test if my game state equals zero you can say do well display something like a main menu with different options here once someone clicks on something for example play the game the state of the game would change uh, to you would write something like this my game state equals one so now we have two different states here one we would write another if and this would basically mean that uh, the game is playing right so so here you would write your code process your game whatever that means uh, move your character uh, get controls from the keyboard and the mouse or whatever so we're not no longer in state zero uh, at that point we would not be there anymore and the game would start and we would type our code that would happen during the game so this is one example of creating a game object so let's say the game is already playing we need to add some more objects we can create a second constructor for the player object. There's one player, so in the same way, player. And you'll see here that I start my constructor names from a capital letter. For the game, it's a G. For the player, it's a P. Um, it's not really important, but it's probably a good idea to stick to that um, because, as you may know, uh, these are the standard rules for JavaScript. When you're creating a function constructor, you start it with a capital letter. So in the same way, let's create a player object. And this is a little more interesting than just the game state. Uh, usually, the player has an X and Y position on the screen. So you have X, Y. Um, other things, you can say uh, this lives how many lives does the player have uh, you can set it by default to whatever you want I would say three uh, this uh, uh, this is really a design game design issue or object design issue it's entirely up to you uh, you can assign the score to the player object but because there's always just one score we can probably move this to the game state so as you can see this is just this core of the entire game it's, it's always kept in the same variable so it probably belongs more in the game constructor game object than the player uh, lives definitely belongs in the player constructor so just you know make critical decisions like this on your own and see what you know makes sense for for placement of these variables into the, the objects that you created. So what else would a player have? Is we have x, y, lives, uh, p. Players have states too sometimes. For example, if, if the player is jumping or running, that can be tracked too. Zero could be nothing, right? Uh, uh, zero, nothing one could be running the player is moving we need to track all these states when when it happens in the game it really helps to do things if we can check the state of the player we can do other things based on that uh, two could be jumping 
three, just whatever you want. Um, using an item or it, it's really <laughs> up to to what's what's going to happen in your game. Uh, by the way, I'm trying to talk faster, not because I talk fast, but because I I'm trying to cover as much as possible in a short period of time. Um, so player constructor has some values in the same way. So we have the game. Now we're initializing the player. You can go like this, player, new, player. And let's see what happens here. Now we have the game and the player. Now we can go into the state of the game. Let's say this is playing, as we discussed earlier. Playing, there's a game in progress. We're processing a game, so we need to do something with the player. So we're gonna use this player object that we just created right here and do something with it. Player x, uh, let's say that somewhere out there we have a keyboard library that tracks the key, state of the key. And it's outside of this example, it, it's not here, but let's say that we have it. Let's say we have a keyboard object somewhere. If, if um, keyboard state let's say zero or whatever, maybe it's um, right arrow or left, left arrow, keyboard state um, equals true, or you don't really have to say that, but then player, move player uh, minus five, five units, whatever, it's pixels or anything. Same way we can do uh, if keyboard state one, right arrow move player right obviously or in some games the screen is moving the, the player is staying inside or in the center of the screen and in that case again we can create a camera object in the same exact way this x don't forget the semicolon so the camera usually has an xy position you can do other things with it later, but just to show as an example, camera, let's have a comment. In the same way, we need to initialize it, camera, new, camera. And here, let's say the player is always staying in, in the center. In the previous example, we moved the actual player, which is fine for some games. But if it's a side scroller or platformer, the player is always in the center. So we're not moving the player, we're moving the camera position. Camera X. So we're replacing player here with camera. And instead of minus, it's obviously it's plus because camera moves in the opposite, counter opposite direction from the player. So the camera, when we're going left, camera is really moving right um, or sliding right, whatever. Well. And these are the commands that will allow us to do that. So here we created a small game construct, <laughs> a game, we have a player, we have a camera, and this is a, a good start for defining how things are going to uh, work in your JavaScript game. Obviously we're skipping the keyboard state. Uh, I can cover that in a different tutorial. I have a library for that uh, here, controls JS. As you can see, it's already completed. There's a whole bunch uh, of things. Here I used variables to map key down, uh, key up, key down, left, right. Um, and these are the for the Xbox controller, key Z, A, S, X. Uh, they're all mapped to the keyboard and the Xbox controller picks it up uh, using some other third-party software and here I wrote the code to map those um, actions from coming from the Xbox controller or the keyboard it's the same thing it's just mapped to the same thing and when for example when the left key is pressed what we want to do is to um, define an array of keyboard states the K state 0 
and turn it to true. So when I key down jQuery uh, event, when I key up, we're doing the same thing, except setting k state zero to false when the key is depressed. So we have these two events. That's why I have two blocks. This is for key press. The key up is going. Uh, the key is going up. In a game where you're designing really fluid controls, where you need um, precision, you need both of these. You need to track both the key down and the key up events. And without them, it would be difficult to uh, create some, you know, legitimate controlling uh, controlling system for your game. that would function properly and controls would be smooth you have to do some other uh, work in the main game loop for this for all of this to work but uh, here's mouse controls uh, not quite similar a little different because here we're tracking mouse down and basically uh, I don't currently use this function in, in any of the games that I'm working on but this is uh, prepare to write all this code if you if you're looking to implement some kind of a keyboard controls uh, system for your game characters and going back to the tutorial object js file and this um, concludes this tutorial i think it's already getting really long and hopefully that you learned something and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Thanks for watching.